So welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. It is the day before the inspectors coming over for multiple rough end inspections from plumbing, electrical, underground electrical, in progress siding, uh, lots of different things like gas line, pressure checks, all that stuff. Can't even think of it. So I've only got a few hours left before I have to get ready for a live stream for y'all. This video is going to go over a couple of days, but something I have to do before he gets here tomorrow is seal up some cavities and gaps around the house. So this episode is going to be all about sealing up the house. Well, at least to my standards. So what I'm going to start on today is anywhere you see pipes go through wall and you have uh, gaps like this through blocking and especially top plates we have to seal those up for draft control you cannot have draft go through for fire potentials you don't want to feed a fire that says upstairs or downstairs trying to get upstairs so all top plates all penetrations have to be sealed where i made plumbing mistakes like that we're going to fill that in where all the electrical goes through upstairs we have to try to seal all that in i've got some really cool uh, stuff today to show y'all that we're going to do this with so let's get started Ah, the joys of YouTube and editing and cameras and sometimes the problems that go along with it. So I'm editing this video that I recorded two days ago now and realized I'm missing a file of me explaining what we're doing today and what this is. I may have deleted it when I was transferring over, who knows. So that's why I look different, I'm dressed different. Yes, it's a different day. And then you're gonna see me cut back to, well, two days ago. So what I purchased was the 14 inch, it's the Great Stuff Pro 14 inch uh, spray gun here and it's made just for their foam attachment. Now right now I have the Great Stuff cleaner in here. I'll talk about that later in the episode because I've already cleaned the gun out and used it. But I have been using their Fireblock foam seal. Now they also make, uh, this is a closed cell foam. They also make an open cell foam for going around doors and windows. You're gonna see me use that later on and they even make a construction adhesive for subflooring that I'm really thinking about. It's really nice to do this, just squeeze a trigger versus squeezing caulk out of a gun over and over and over, or you know something like liquid nails. So I purchased this with my own money. Look around online, you'll find these anywhere from $42 to $84 is what I've seen locally. So they're worth it. This thing's absolutely worth it. It comes with a couple tips that slide on the end that has long little like syringe-like nozzles if you want to get in extremely tight places. But uh, what you see is what you get. It has an open and control valve right here to adjust your bead size and how much the trigger pulls, basically how much it lets out. So you can go from a thin bead, plugging up a single electrical hole to turn this thing wide open and fill a huge gap. But code does require that I fill these gaps. So even though I've already had my inspection, yeah, this is getting confusing. I had, I felt like I had to close up some of the gaps to pass inspection, especially with electrical. That's why I did some of this. Now, yes, we have spray foam installers coming literally in just a few days. That probably would have passed code, but my inspection was before all that, obviously. So I chose to seal the house up and make for sure that I seen no light, no problems. All right. Let's get back to the video. All right, so for very large gaps, like right here, where all my AC stuff went through, let's see if we can get this in there. Well, it's not pretty, but it is required. And it is expanding all the way out the bottom too, as you can see. So that should be good. Well, that was easy enough right there. 
So that cavity is filled and airflow cannot go through up to the next story. All right, so areas like around these boxes is somewhere else that I really want to make sure I get sealed up good. Some of these areas I could get in with caulk or silicone, things like that, but this gun does such a really good job of actually expanding in those tight spaces. We're good. Now then there's other areas like, well, let me show you right here. So if you look around, you can see the light out areas all around this boxes. Some of those will probably seal up better with some uh, rubber butyl or caulk. So I'm going to do that. You'll see me do that here in just a second. But as far as getting around boxes and tight spaces like back in here, it's very hard to get the caulk in there in some of these other areas. So I think the gun will work really good there. And I can tell you what, at the moment I'm impressed. I've done almost this entire house, bunch of different areas, and I'm still on the first can. This gun works really good. This is actually next day, so as y'all probably already watched the video, I passed inspection, so now I'm comfortable to go start sealing up things like this, so I was waiting. I, I sealed up everything else that I knew would pass, but I wasn't sure if there were some areas they would tell me, hey, you gotta pull wire out or redo something, so there was no point in having it completely sealed in. But we're good, we got the thumbs up, so now we're moving forward. And not only am I sealing for air leakage, uh, I want a really tight house. It's something I've really focused on. You're paying good money con to condition your air. There's no point in blowing it outside. But probably one of the even bigger reasons that I'm doing all this trouble and going through all this trouble to uh, seal the house is bugs. This is Florida. We have ants everywhere. Our number one bug, roaches, spiders, everything else. And all these little areas where I can see light very easily could get ants coming into the house. Now these wall cavities are gonna get sealed up with spray foam. Uh, the guy's coming next week to do that, but my feeling is they're just gonna blow it in real quick with a gun and going about their business. I am not so sure that it's gonna be able to work its way into cracks like this little gun will and me actually putting some rubber butyl silicone, things like that with my finger and filling in some of these areas. So, hey, if it does, great. We're gonna get double the sealing here with me going ahead of these guys that's gonna come in and do their sealing and spray foam. And I've been looking at this stuff over the last few days. It looks messy, but all it takes is a real quick shot of this and it'll work its way out of the back side of the hole. It expands really, really well. It is a bit messy, no doubt about that, but that doesn't matter now that we've passed inspection. I want a good sealed house. Well, that actually looks like that gets in there really well. So we may do that instead of the silicone.
tell you what, I just got this new shop vac from Stanley. It's a little smaller than I was thinking when I ordered it, but I'm kind of glad I got it. This thing works really, really well. It's probably a bit undersized for this big of a job, but once I get done with the house, this is gonna be perfect for like vacuuming out the tractor, vehicles, things like that. But really powerful for the size. So let me explain what I was just doing. So I was starting by only cleaning the baseboards, but then, well, my OCD got a hold of me, and about an hour later, I have vacuumed the entire house. It was getting disgusting and driving me crazy. So what I am trying to accomplish here is I've got the spray foam people coming now that we've passed inspection. So I have blown off all the blocking all the way down to make sure I get good spray foam adhesion because some of this stuff literally was that thick and build up with wood chips, you know, from drilling all these holes. There's just no way you'd want to blow insulation in on top of that. So I've got all my base paints blown out so the uh, spray foam will stick good. Plus you got to get everything nice and clean. I have paid the uh, insulators to come in and seal, for example, every crack and every stud like this, they seal it up really good so no air can get through. And I'm going to go ahead and seal the base plate to the floor. I've already done a really good job of doing that on the outside. You can see I put that rubber butyl there whenever I put on my outside sheathing to seal to the bottom plate. Then I've got the foam seal. As you can see, it's sticking out right here underneath my bottom plates. Now I'm gonna come back with like a rubber beetle or polyurethane and run a thick bead all the way along the floor just to make for sure that I'm getting, you know, bug protection, sealing out for the bugs. And that's the last little bit of where air can go out. But I wanted to make sure I had where the base plate meets the concrete nice and clean. So I've been vacuuming up to do that so I can get good adhesion. So good news, and scratch what I just told you. I just got off the phone with the spray foam installer and uh, figured I'd call first and said, hey, do y'all happen to include caulking the baseboards to the slab in that quote that you gave me? He said, yes. I said, great, now I don't have to do it. So I said, I've already got it vacuumed and swept up and cleaned for you. So, awesome. So I guess to wrap this video up, I have one more penetration through the wall that we have to trim out and get sealed up and then we can see no more light other than the windows and doors which we're going to catch in a much further episode down the road so let's get this last penetration All right, so this episode was supposed to have a lot more ceiling in it than it did. 
But like I said, I was pleasantly surprised to find out from the uh, insulators that they're going to seal bottom plates and everything else that I was gonna take the time to do. Not to mention we're gonna seal every crack around the wall by every six by six, every you know double, triple, or quadruple stack stud that can allow air through. Those are supposed to get caulked and sealed as well. So we'll show that next week whenever the insulators come and after they get done. We'll just do an episode on spray foam insulation and how they sealed the house up. Now, as far as this Great Stuff Pro Gun, I love it. But here's what blows my mind. I have did this entire house, and I'm talking a ton of foaming. I went crazy, went overboard, sealed way more than I ever should because, well, insulators are coming with a really good spray foam, and I still haven't run out of the first can yet. I can tell it's almost empty, though. So I am going to use this uh, Great Stuff Cleaner right here. It actually comes with a little nozzle that you can put on the can, and then you also can screw this into the gun itself. Check that out. The foam that was just on the end, it just ate it right off and took it away. That's pretty neat. Now you can use this same can of cleaner right here to screw into the gun. So let's see how this works out. I cannot believe how long this stuff has lasted. I got my money's worth right here. Now the problem is I bought several more cans that uh, will obviously last a very long time, like potentially years. So just unscrew it. Yeah, it's practically empty, finally. And as you can see, the gun needs a little cleanup. Wow, it just took that stuff right off. By the way, I'm not sponsored by this company. I bought all this with my own money off of Amazon. The reviews look good, thought I would try it. All right, so let's put the cleaner on here and clean the gun out. Now the gun is ready for storage. And they always say store with a can actually hooked up so you close this all the way off so nothing can get in there, the trigger doesn't work. And I guess I'll just leave this hooked up until the next time I wanna hook up a can of foam and we will be using this again. So that worked out really well. I've got some more of the foam coming for this for uh, going around windows and doors. It's a different type than the gap foam that I just had. It'll actually be springy and not cause things to bow out. They also have adhesive for this that I'm very curious about to keep you from having to squeeze a caulk gun and do like a subfloor adhesive. I'm almost tempted to try that because we still have to do the subfloor upstairs. I'm gonna think about it. That would be really neat just to run along with this gun and do subfloor adhesive and uh, knock it out real quick. So that's pretty neat. If you're interested in this, I'll throw a link down in the description. Again, not sponsored by this company at all. They don't have a clue that I'm even making this video. I just thought it was a neat product. So hopefully you enjoyed the little bit of seal in the house that we did right here. The big episode is gonna be once we get the insulation itself actually done. We'll catch you on the next video.